Not long ago, I brought you the Fire Maple Hornet 2 Titanium Ultralight Gas Canister Stove. And while I continue to enjoy using this stove, there are a few features I think could be improved upon. Well, now I have the Fire Maple FMS116T, standing for a Titanium Ultralight Gas Canister Stove. And I think this does show improvements over the other stove worth considering. Interested in hearing my thoughts on this stove? Keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Fire Maple for sending out the FMS116T titanium gas canister stove so that I could share it with you. So what I thought I'd do was take it down to the tabletop. I'll briefly go over the specifications and performance of this stove, but more importantly, I want to compare it against the Hornet 2 titanium stove to give you an idea of how they operate and compare some one against the other. And I'll also talk about my experiences using this stove. All right, just before we take a closer look at the FMS 116T. I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So this is the box the stove arrived in from Fire Maple. Considerable amount of information on it. It does come with a manual and warranty information. And the other thing it came with is this storage or transport canister. And I just want to show you how this works and then make pass a comment on it and we'll get it out of the way. So to start with, let me just take the top off, grab the stove itself. So to store it away, you would fold the pot stands out of the way and the valve adjuster and drop it down inside. And as I do, I just want to point out there is a little nub or protrusion here that sticks into where the Lindau valve is located just to help center it in the canister and then just line up the threads which sometimes is a little bit more challenging than others there we go line it up and there you go so now it's all put away safe for storage and ain't no damage going to occur to it great for that purpose the only comment i'm going to say is this canister weighs almost as much as the stove itself does and since this is considered an ultra light stove i'm just thinking this is probably more weight than i would want to carry or a lot of people who like to go ultra light would carry so what i'm going to do is i'm going to replace this canister with a homemade little stuff sack for it just to lighten it up and i'll make sure that when i store it away it's protected from any damages okay i will go over the specifications for this stove quickly uh, we're going to compare it against the hornet 2 just for it to show feature to feature and then of course i'll do some demonstrations with it so to begin with the weight for this stove is very light at 1.7 ounces or 48 grams and i I mentioned just how heavy the case was it's 1.4 ounces 40 grams all by itself so you can see why i wanted to subtract that from the equation the height of this stove is 2.6 inches or 67 millimeters the diameter is 2.4 inches or 62 millimeters it is made of primarily titanium but there is also aluminum stainless steel and copper in, it con in its construction there are no stoves that i'm aware of that are 100 percent titanium and uh, this is no different however they've done a good job of maximizing the amount of titanium to lighten the stove weight as much as possible now I just another thing I want to point out is on the website fire maple lists this stove as having a power of 9600 BTUs that is not correct in the manual it rates it at 7848 BTUs so 7848 BTUs so I did reach out to Fire Maple about the discrepancy and they corrected that it is incorrect on the website or they advised that it is incorrect on the website and what is stated in the manual is correct still plenty powerful still will do the job just not 9600 BTUs all right so I have done some performance testing with the stove. I won't be demonstrating that today, but I did three consecutive tests with the stove, boil tests that is, where I took 0.5 liters or 500 milliliters of water, which is the same as two cups of water at room temperature, 61 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, I did this here at home just for the consistency of testing. I got a boil time average of three tests at three minutes, 14 seconds. Very respectable, three minutes, 14 seconds. 
seconds, and I got an average fuel consumed of seven grams. Again, very respectable. So it is not only quick enough to be considered a good stove, but it is fuel efficient enough to be considered a good stove. And I just want to point out, I have used it a fair amount in the field, but my testing for the boil times was done here at home for consistency. All right, let me just bring the Hornet 2 back into the picture, and I'll talk about what I see as features that could be improved over the Hornet 2. So to begin, I still enjoy using the Hornet 2. I don't want to make you think it's not a good stove. It certainly is. And as I mentioned earlier, the review to this stove will be linked at the end of this video because I won't be going over its performance and its specs and all that type of thing. But here are the things that I just want to point out. So to begin, the assembly of this stove. So in order to put the stove in operating condition, you first start by well, let me just put it back in its storage shape. So there it is in storage configuration. It has a nice little plastic case for uh, holding it in as well. So I can just bend the valve down that would close uh, and open the flame. Now, in order to put the pot stands up, you raise them up, as you can see, and start to, well, you turn it out at an angle and then open the pot stands up and they rest in little notches on the shaft of the stove. And when it's open like this, it's very strong, very wide, works extremely well. But here is the couple of things that I want to say about it. Look at the height between the burner itself and the pot rests. And my, the issue there is the um, chances of the wind, cross winds coming along and robbing away some of your heat and uh, slowing down your boil times. So yes, that can be a bit of an issue with this stove. Now the fix for that is simple enough, is take some type of a windscreen to block the wind and, and it eliminates that concern. That's fine. That's just one of the things I want to point out. Now the other is the burner itself extremely efficient, extremely well designed. As you'll see in a moment when I do the flame pattern comparisons, this produces a very tight turbo type of a flame and it creates a very hot flame indeed. Very blue, very clean burning hot flame. And that's great for boiling water, not so great if you're trying to simmer or fry or just keep anything from sticking or scorching on the bottom of your pan. It does have great flame control, but at the same time, it's still just a bit of a challenge trying to keep from burning anything. So that's just another one of those features. So there, basically, I'd say there are three things about this stove that maybe could be improved upon. Now, just the same, the performance, the speed and the and the, uh, the performance of the stove is tremendous. So I'm not discounting the stove at all. But let's just bring in the Fire Maple FMS 116T again to give you some comparison. So to start with, the pot rests, they fold out a little loose maybe, but I don't see that as a big issue. They fold out nicely and they store away just as quickly as you can see. Very easy. No fuss or must trying to get them into position. The first thing I want to show you is look how low the pot rests are to the top of the burner. Not much of a gap there at all. And as a result, any cross breezes are less likely to rob away heat and slow your performance down on this stove. So that's number one in terms of improvements. Number two, of course, or maybe number one, we'll consider how easy it is to bring the stove into operating condition. Number two being just how low it are. Number three, look at the burner itself. Look how wide it is, how many jets there were, and the dispersion of the flame is so much greater with this that it's, uh, it's, the heat is distributed across the bottom of any pot or pan, lessening the chances of you burning or make scorching anything inside of it. It also has great flame control here. And what you can do is you can just get a better simmer between the two of them. Any downsides? Well, not really. It's just a matter of what you consider your priorities. This is a little bit slower bringing things to a boil than is the Hornet 2. And that's about the difference I would see. Other than that, I'll let you watch the other video just so you get an idea. Now, what I thought I would do here is set both of these up on gas canister so stoves, turn the lights down and show you the flame pattern. All right, I've turned all the lights off in the room with the exception of one, which I will turn off after I get the stoves lit. Now, I just want to make a few comments on the stove 
those before I light them up. And the reason, of course, is that the Hornet 2 is a bit of a jet rocket engine. It can be quite noisy, as you'll hear in a moment. I'm going to start by lighting up the FMS 116T because it is much quieter. That's a key pro feature for this stove as well. Very quiet operation by comparison with the Hornet 2. Now, here are the two things I want to mention. The flame pattern you're going to see on the Hornet 2 is very condensed, very tight, and very clean, burning blue. And it has a turbo action with it. So it does a really good job of concentrating the heat on the bottom of a pot and delivering that heat very effectively for a quick boil. On the other hand, the pattern you're going to see on the FMS 116T is much more diffuse, much more dispersed, and uh, it ha doesn't have quite as intense a flame, but of course that means much better simmering ability. Now the other thing you're going to notice is that while the flame remains very blue, very clean on the Hornet 2, after a moment or two of being lit, the flame on the FMS 116T starts to turn yellow. Now, I'll be honest, when I got this stove, I was concerned about that to a, uh, to a degree, and I reached out to Fire Maple to find out which, exactly what was going on, because normally a yellow flame indica indicates a mismatch between fuel and oxygen, and you're not getting a clean, efficient burn. But as you'll see, it is a clean, efficient burn. The flame remains very blue at the jet. But what is happening is that as the pot rests heat up, the titanium itself heats off, that's when the flame starts to turn yellow. And as you can see from the design, the pot rests actually cross right over the burner itself. So they're all very much exposed to the heat. And in fact, they'll start to turn red very, very quickly. That's not the case at all with the Hornet 2. It remains cool or cool by comparison. The jets don't uh, heat the pot stands up at all. So there is no combination of the heating of the titanium. All right, let's get this stove going. Again, I'll start with the the FMS 116T. Another point to under know is that neither of these stoves come with piezoelectric lighters. So you're going to need a flame source. Just want to point out just how clean it is now. Now I have the stove turned up to about half power, which is actually where I use it most of the time. And I'll show you flame at full intensity and reduce it down to a simmer in a moment. But just notice, look how, or hear how quiet it is by comparison. Now I'm just gonna move that over a bit and I'll light up the Hornet 2. Again, that's only at half power, but it is so much noisier right off of the stop. So let's just take a note of the flame pattern on the Hornet 2. Very clean, turbo action, and very centered on the bottom of the pot. Now already, you're starting to see on the FMS 116, the yellowing of the flame. And already I can see the pot stands, the titanium, where it crosses over the burner, starting to heat up. And that's where the yellowing is taking place. But at the same time, when I look into the stove at the jets, they remain blue. So it is a good fuel mixture. It's just a characteristic of the titanium itself heating up. All right, let's just turn up the Hornet 2 and then down. Quite the rocket stove. Now let me just turn that down into a simmer. And that's about as low as I feel I can go. It's gotten very quiet. Turn this one up into a high heat. Still very quiet, of course. Again, still very yellow. Now I'll turn that down to a simmer. I can get it down very, very low. It's still a little bit yellow, and I can still see the titanium is nice and red, or quite red, I should say. But in either case, both of them are performing very well. Again, the FMS 116T has that distributed or diffuse heat, meaning less of a chance, no guarantees, of course, it's up to your skill and technique, less of a chance of burning the food to the bottom of your pot, whereas there's still, even with that small flame, you're still gonna have to move your pot or pan around to keep things from burning. All right, let's turn both of these off and we'll wrap this video up. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments comparing the Fire Maple FMS 116T with the Hornet 2 titanium gas canister stove. So to start with, let's just go back to the Hornet 2. And what I really like about it, of course, is the intense heat and high efficiency of this burner, but with that small central 
turbo core of flame, if you will. That's also a bit of a con in the sense that it is a bit more challenging to prevent burning or scorching or anything sticking to a bottom of a pot if you're doing anything other than boiling water. It can be done, it just takes a bit more work. Now, one of the downsides to this feature or one of the aspects you need to be aware of, of course, is the pot stands are higher on this than they are in the other stove. As a result, they are more subject to cross breezes, robbing heat away. And the other thing, again, just more of a peculiarity with the stove is how the pot stands themselves deploy. After a bit of practice, it isn't a, an issue at all, but when you first get it, you can struggle a little bit just learning how to uh, open those up, extend them and open them up and lock them into place. Once they're locked in, they're perfectly strong and do a really good job of the, what they are. All right, so those are the pros and cons for this stove. On the other hand is this one. Now this is a bit smaller in its compacted state. The pot stands open up very, very easily. They're very low to the burner, meaning less of your heat is being robbed away by cross breezes, breezes. And the flame pattern is much more diffuse, much more dispersed because of the greater number of jets on the burner itself at the same time. And it's, it's not as intense a heat. So you don't get the speed or efficiency in terms of bringing water to a boil, but you do get a great more control when it comes to simmering and frying and lessening the chance of anything sticking or scorching on the bottom of your pot. I guess in the end, it's up to you what it is you prioritize, what it is you're looking for in a stove. If it's a fast boil and that's all you're looking for, then the Hornet 2 is a great choice. If you're looking for a little bit more versatility, maybe not with the same heat output, then the FMS 116T is a good choice. Either one, they're both good choices as far as that go. All right, I'll be putting all the information I have regarding these stoves, both of them actually, in the video description below, including links to where you can take another look at them. I do offer you a discount code. Fire Maple has given me that if you're interested, and I'll put that in the video description as well, as well as the link to the review I did of the Hornet 2 at an earlier date. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.